Hi, howdy everybody. I just came in here to have some whiskey and beer and say howdy to you all. Why you all know me, it's old vintage electronics geek you see. I don't have a beard, but I got the hat and the shades and all. Now I just come in here to have some fun and you know I'm gonna get it done. No, 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 no. Actually, I come in here to wrap a, a fat jam. How was that? Okay, enough of that nonsense. Welcome to VintageElectronicsGeek.com's video channel. I am Jack. Let's move on. Today's video is going to talk about this Tenma AC millivolt meter. I bought this meter to replace that meter. This is also a bench meter and I'm trying to get away from handheld devices. Nothing wrong with them per se. My workbench is small, so real estate is at a premium. So if I can get things up off of my workbench area, then that's going to be fantastic for me. However, that does come at a premium because now we're talking about shelf space and that I do not have. However, by wrangling things about, I will have room to put this. I just now have to figure out where to put all my small stuff like my solder and flux and alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol that is. And that's where this device is going to go into. I do have one more test meter to demo. It's supposed to be in today. So if I have to jet, that's because the FedEx man is here. So we'll see. As stated, this is a AC millivolt meter. This is replacing, going to replace that analog voltometer. I bought that analog voltometer for one purpose, one purpose only, and that is to use in line with tuning up radios. I found that that meter to work okay, but as stated, bench top base was not okay. Also at times that meter was just not quite sensitive enough. I have been trolling for a millivolt meter for quite some time. This one that we're looking at is primarily in use for audio. The one I was looking for, trolling for, was actually a RF millivolt meter, which is great for sniffing out really low power RF. However, I do believe that this is going to work out just perfect for that, for that purpose just the same, and I'll try to demo that how I come up to that cheap cheesy conclusion. Now I have tested this and it's really cool. I like it. However, I have not opened it up to see what's on the inside. So we will do that together. Before I plug this in and test this, let's go ahead and open this up and see the guts. Now I do want to apologize right up front. I do believe that this video is going to be a little lengthy because of the multitudes of tests that we are going to do. We are going to throw this on the O-scope. We're going to hook up a microphone. We will hook up a function generator. So by all means, I do apologize if this video is, is too long up front. And I understand if you can't stay. But please, grab a cold one on your way out and close the door. Whatever cold one is that suits your fancy, grab that. To open this up, we simply move my feet out of the way. And we have four screws, well, two screws on either side. And we'll just simply take our screwdriver. Now I keep forgetting to tell you what these uh, pieces of gear are used for. Um, this is used for audio and so you could use this to test you know microphones and speakers um, stuff of, of that nature. Like I said I'm going to use this for tuning up radios. Now this, um, we'll get into the, the front of it here in just a moment, 
but let's uh, go ahead and zoom in. And I, I should have, I guess, did a, a walk around the entire device, but I, I'm kind of excited to open this thing up. I've been waiting so long. So a quick peek, as you can see, we do have a handful of electrolytics. Now, like I said, this is the first time I've opened this. I have, uh, I'm seeing this for the first time as you. So we do have, like I said, a handful of electrolytics. We do have what appears to be either some capacitors. Yes, capacitors and not trimmers. Uh, we do have some IC chips. I don't know what year this one's from. I have not done any research on it uh, too heavily. I have tried to locate the owner's service manual, but really have not been able to find. If you have an idea of when this was made, or even a service owner's manual, let me know. Hook me up. I'd appreciate that. We do have a trimmer right here. So I got you zoomed into no particular spot on the board, just wherever the camera landed is where I got you. And so this is This is what it looks like on the insides. Got a test point. And inside the hole here, you see we have another trimmer. Looking in camera, it does not appear that any of the caps are leaky. Don't appear that they're uh, bubbled. At this point in time, I, I doubt I'll recap it, maybe another point in time in the future, but not right now. And then the transformer. And then on the front side, you see we have the meter. And then we have the other side of the meter. Looking at this capacitor, we do have what appears to be glue. I, I'm not really sure. That is hard. It's not wet. So I may have to uh, service, this, service this sooner than anticipated. On the front of the device, we have our big meter. This is a class 1.5 meter, uh, or I should say device. I don't know what that really represents. I do see a lot of meters like this that say class 1.5. Need to do research on that. Type 1201. We have a little tick mark right here on the meter. I have no idea what that represents. And then of course AC volts. Right here we have a little screw set that will calibrate the meter. We have our 
power switch. We have a BNC in and a BNC out. We have our power indicator light. And then we have our control switch, which, will, which would take us through the various ranges. And the ranges are 300 microvolts at negative 70 dB all the way through 100 volts at plus 40 dB. Or I should say, or, as far as the decibels are concerned. I have the cover put back on and I've got it wired up to my function generator and that's at about uh, 7.5 thousand hertz running into the input and then on the output we're going into the O scope. I have this set to 3 volts plus 10 dB setting and as we could see we do have a, a uh, a signal, a sine wave here. Now if I adjust the amplitude on the function generator you could see both of them corresponding. And so that's full power there on the generator. And like I said, you know, this is a really sensitive device. In fact, this this is picks up a lot of noise in your environment. So So I, I got this turned the um, amplitude all the way down. I'm going to put a, a is it a 20 dB attenuator on that. And you see that disappeared, that dropped. So I got that all the way down. Let me make adjustments, see if I can find it. So you see on the scope I've, I've got something barely. Now on your end that looks like I have something, a signal, and I do. On my end that's really fuzzy, which is telling me really, really low power. So I have the time and division set to um, one microsecond. And then I have the volts per division set all the way as far as it'll go down is at five uh, was it millivolts per division. So that's as far as we got that going. I've got nothing else um, amplified to try to um, view it as you saw. Barely got a signal here. And so we could just turn this down again, and you can see our signals coming up on both display. So as you see, this actually does control the output. So here, you see we're we're starting to uh, uh, run into saturation. And for the setting here. This is at 1 millivolt minus 60 dB. So I could only go one more setting, which is 300. Actually, I take that back two more settings. This thing has um, um, steps in between the marked numbers, and I'm not sure exactly what those are setting. Like I said, I don't have an owner's manual, so I'm not sure what it represents. So... As you see, the meter here is already pegged out, which is probably why, why this is um, also ran into saturation at the bottom. I cannot go any lower on that device than I, I, I already am. So realistically, if I come back up one, I'm still saturated over here. So for here, I have to go which I believe is about 20 millivolts because it's in between uh, 10 millivolts and 30 millivolts. I alluded earlier to the fact that this would pick up noise in your environment, in, your, in the line and all that good stuff. 
Here you can see that's true. I'm at 300 millivolts, my bottom setting, and you could see very clear that the meter is up. Next thing we're going to do, I just want to show you the sensitivity of this going with this. Still nothing connected to this. Keep an eye on my finger, keep an eye on the meter. I'm not even touching the B and C. That's how sensitive it is. If I touch the BNC, and I'm just touching the uh, barrel, so the closer my finger gets to that center point, you could see, you could see this thing is digging my vibe. The old, age old question, will it show up on the oscope just with my finger? Yes, it can. I also made mention um, that I, I believe that this would be sens sensitive enough to pick up RF frequencies. I come to that conclusion by simply doing this. A probe, my hand, the meter. So if that wire could pick up signals off my hand, what about RF signals? Well. You're just in luck. I have something to produce an RF signal. One of those uh, family radio walkie-talkies that transmits up in the uh, 400 megahertz spectrum. So let's see. Did you see the meter move? True, right up on it, but if I adjust my sensitivity You can see that it does move. And the scope also actuates. So that's what I'm saying. I, I think that this is going to work out just fine for both audio and RF. So the next test we're going to do is we're going to grab a microphone. Now I've already took the liberty of wiring it up through these Crockett Gators. This is just a, a vintage old Sony microphone. Don, I'm a junk collector, will recognize this because he has a set of these as well. This is a really nice vintage microphone. I have not done a um, video on it, but Don has on his. One day I will do it on mine. So I've got this set up to about 10 millivolts wired in and so now you can see that it is working just fine. So this gives you a fantastic idea of you know testing things out. How sensitive is it you wonder? Well that makes two of us. Let's find out. As you can see rubbing my finger across it at about one millivolt it does pick it up. And as you see, it is picking up my voice. I'm a good 16 inches away or so from the microphone. Let's drop this down to 300 millivolts. And there we go. So this is going to probably end the video. Hopefully it wasn't too terribly long. I think that you get the drift of the video. I think you see how sensitive this device is and how well it'll work. All right, I'm shutting up now. Talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoyed my little cheesy video. Have fun and we will catch you in the next one. See ya.